So you edit your images in Photoshop, but you don't exactly know always what to do. I can't tell you how often I hear this from my clients, from other photographers that they want to use Photoshop, but they just aren't sure how to edit. You know, you edit your photos in Lightroom and it all makes sense. Everything's on the right side of the screen. You just work your way down, adjust some sliders and bam, there is your perfect image. In Photoshop though, you load in and the interface is a little bit different. You have to know where to look exactly what to do, and you can take it a thousand different ways. I'm Austin James Jackson, professional landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. In this video, I wanna show you guys four of my favorite Photoshop editing effects that you can do to your images. If you're someone that struggles to find things to do in Photoshop to enhance your image, this is going to be the perfect video for you. Um, and even if you are someone that already has a good workflow in Photoshop. You should definitely still know these four things for landscape photography because they're going to be things that you may want in your tool belt to use from time to time with your images. Let's go ahead and jump right over into Photoshop here. Now I'm gonna show you the first two effects on this image and then I have another image that I'm gonna show you two more effects on. On this photo, the first thing I wanna show you is a warping. If you're not sure how to warp your images, this is gonna easily show you how to do it um, in kind of the short, sweet, and simple way. And I'm gonna talk you through why you might wanna warp your images. Now this photo looks fine as is, but there's a couple reasons why I think I want to warp it. Um, first thing is first, you can see that the horizon is not straight and it's actually like curved in a way that I wouldn't be able to just use the crop tool and straighten it out. I need to warp it to fix it. You'll see when I drag a guide down here and you can see I have that guide on the horizon over here on the right. It's level and then it just dips down. This is just a feature of the terrain here, um, but I do want to fix it. It's something that I want to fix in my image because to me, it's really distracting to a lot of people. Maybe you didn't even notice that when you first looked, but it's something I like fixing. Now, additionally, I want to just kind of make these mountains look a little bit more grand. You know, when I was here, it was just incredible. The mountains were huge, but this photo, because I'm so far away, I shot it with my wide angle and the mountains are in the center of the frame. Um, I'm losing a little bit of that height that I would get if these mountains were say at the top of the frame or if I shot this with a telephoto lens. Now sure, some people might say that this isn't photography, this is digital editing, but that's totally up to you. If that's you, go ahead and just skip to the next part. You don't need to know about this. But if you are someone that wants to kind of make your images a little bit better and you wanna make it feel more like it did in the field, then this is gonna be a perfect technique for you. Additionally, I don't like uh, this river down here or whatever you wanna call this. It's a little too wide. I wanna kinda of just narrow it in just a little bit, make it a little more interesting. So now that I talked you through all of that that I wanna do, let's go ahead and make it happen. So we're gonna duplicate this layer one, click and drag it down here to that plus button. Uh, I just like to duplicate it because then I have a before and after, I can toggle it. Now, and you can even double click this and call it warp. Now I'm gonna hit uh, Command T on Mac and that's Control T on a PC. And then we will right click, or that's control click on a Mac, I believe, and hit warp. Now we have the option. We can drag this image around however we want. You can go to town with this. I will say, don't go too crazy with this. I've seen it a lot of times. People will go absolutely crazy, and your image just isn't going to look good if you go too crazy. So use this in moderation, folks. First thing I want to do, um, actually, that's probably the last thing I want to do is to straighten this horizon. So let's go ahead and make our other changes. Now, some people will click on the image, some people will click on the edge of the image, a lot of different options here. My favorite way to do it um, is to use these handles whenever possible. And you wanna make sure you don't drag inside the image because now you can see that we're kind of showing the layer under, which we don't wanna do. So I can drag these two in, and this is gonna just kind of suck this river in a little bit. And we can also just click and drag down over here to kind of pull some of the, this is a little busy in the corner here. I can just kind of make that a little bit less busy there. Just like that. And then you can start to squeeze these in. You can see I'm kind of just pinching them in just a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. We can do a few more things if we wanted, but that looks pretty good. Now to make these mountains taller, super easy. You can either click and drag right here or my personal favorite way is to drag the handlebars again. The handlebars are super helpful guys. You can go crazy with it. As you can see, you can make it the Matterhorn if you want, or you can just kind of make it a little bit more realistic to how it felt in the field. I think somewhere about right in there. Looks good to me. Now, I want to fix the horizon as well while I'm here. Uh, to fix the horizon, probably the best thing to do is just click and drag around over here. 
Um, and if you didn't know how to get this little guideline out, you can hit Command R to get the ruler. Uh, you can see it appears up here, and then you click and drag down, uh, and that gives you a guideline you can release, and then it will appear right here. And I went ahead and just got rid of that little ruler guide for you. If you want to get rid of it, go ahead and click on the Move tool, click on the ruler guide, and click Delete. Now we can zoom back in. We're still in the warp tool here. We want to just line up the grass here on our horizon all the way across. It's already looking pretty good over here. Maybe it's a little too high. Just bring that down, scroll over. You can see it's looking really good right there. It's looking pretty good all the way across. Command zero to zoom back out. We will hit enter or return. Let that thing load out. I'm gonna hide the ruler guide by hitting command colon or semicolon. Now you can see this is what the warp has done. We've got before, we've got after. So we've made the river a little bit less prominent and we've made the mountains a little bit more prominent before, after. One of the main things I get people complaining about in my comments is that I do the before and after transition too quickly. Hopefully this is slow enough for you guys before and after. That's how to do the warp. Let's go ahead and jump in to the vignette. Now I see a lot of people, they make a vignette, they go into Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw here in Photoshop and they just create this nice vignette around the edge by using the vignette slider. It's the absolute worst way to make a vignette, guys. Let me show you a much, much better way. If you've been on my channel for long, you've seen a couple other videos that I have where I talk about some of these different ways to make a vignette. And my personal favorite is the totally custom vignette, which I'm gonna show you right now. So you're going to go up and you're going to click and drag or click and hold here to get the elliptical marquee tool or you can press M and hope that it appears for you. Now you're going to click and drag here. So I apologize because this process is pretty step heavy. Follow the steps once you can create an action later. I'm going to link my video that just talks about solely talking about my custom vignette. It helps you to make the action here. We're not going to talk about making the action here. I'm just going to show you how to do it as a one off. Now, you're gonna click and drag the circle. You can click and drag from the center. You wanna snap this to the middle. Sometimes you get these purple guidelines that snap, and sometimes it snaps but doesn't show you the purple guidelines. So you can feel right there, it snaps into place for me. Now I wanna go up, I wanna go to select, I wanna go to modify, and I wanna go to feather. You wanna feather this by 1,000 pixels. Now you want to go and also uh, I didn't mention this, but create a new layer when you do this. This will just help you to keep it off of the warp layer down here. Now next, uh, what you're going to want to do is invert the selection here. Right now our selection is selecting the center of the image. If we want a vignette, we want to select the outside of the image. We're going to go to select and inverse. Now we're selecting the outside. We're going to go to edit fill. We're going to fill with black. We're going to hit command D to deselect. We're going to go down, change the blend mode to I like soft light as of late. And then we're going to zoom out. Now you're probably thinking, Austin, this vignette looks horrible. Why am I listening to your advice on vignettes? Now let me show you where you really bring it home here. So you're going to hit Command T and Control Click and warp, just like you just did on the other part of the image. Now you're going to warp this vignette into place to make it work for you. Now, one of the biggest problems I see with vignettes is people just throw a standard circle on, and so they're darkening like over here. Why? And think about it, guys. Why would you want to darken this part of the photo when this is where the sunlight's coming from? You shouldn't be darkening it. You should be brightening it, if anything, or just not touching it. So you want to get the vignette away from the bright corner, and I'm hitting Command minus to zoom out to give myself more canvas space. Now you can make this a little bit stronger in certain spots and you can really help to shape the light as you do this. You know, I can make this corner a lot darker because it's far away from the light. Same thing with this corner down here. We can really darken that foreground and then we can kind of drag this down and find the right spot for our vignette. This is by far the best way to make a vignette. I'm going to die on that hill fighting for that. Uh, if you think you have a better way, let me know in the comments. I'll definitely check it out. But I do think this truly is the best way to make a vignette. We'll hit return and hit command zero. That'll let this thing load out and it'll bring us back to full size image before, after, before, after. You can see how little darkening we've done here and how much we've done on the rest of the image. All right, we've got our next photo here. On this one, the first thing I wanna show you is how to do some selective contrast. Now, too often I see people come in here in Photoshop or Lightroom, 
they grab their contrast slider and they say, ooh, contrast, shiny. Um, and not literally shiny, but you know what I mean. It gives you this, oh, wow, these beautiful colors when I bring that contrast up and you just think it looks fantastic. It looks terrible, guys. It looks terrible. You, you smash these blacks, you crush these highlights, and everything is just too bright. Don't do it that way. Delete. Now, the way you're going to add contrast to your image is selectively and this is a pretty easy photo there's definitely photos that i do where i it's more complicated but i want to show you just a simple example because anyone can do this without much knowledge in photoshop i'm going to click and drag here on your marquee tools again use the quick select now when you see what i'm going to do you might say why wouldn't you use the object selection tool it doesn't work that great yet guys maybe it will in the future but right now as of 2024 it doesn't work that great use the quick selection tool now you're going to click and drag you can see why I like the quick selection tool because it is quick. Imagine that the quick selection tool that is quick. We love to see it. You're just clicking and dragging. What I'm doing right now is making a selection um, and I'm holding alt to subtract. And you can see on some of these lower contrast spots, it does struggle a little bit, but you can make this smaller, hold alt to subtract, just kind of get that thing in there. And, you know, we could work with this a lot more, but that's good enough for the sake of this video. Now I have a good selection of the sky and a good selection of the foreground, or I technically I have a selection of the foreground, but I can invert it to get a selection of the sky. Now I want to go ahead and create a curves layer and you can see now I have a selection. This is a layer mask. If you don't know how to use layer masks, I'll link a couple other videos covering that. Um, but this is a layer mask, so white selects and black doesn't select. So anything I make an adjustment to is just going to select on the foreground here. Now I want to go ahead and duplicate this, and I want to invert. Uh, so I duplicated it with Command-J, and then I inverted with Command-I. Now we have a selection of just the sky. So we have one that's for the sky, one that is for the foreground. I'm going to mess with the one in the sky first. I'm going to add some contrast. I can make this look good. And you can really just take this to however far you want. You can see you can really pop those highlights there. And I wouldn't recommend, I see some people, they make a curve and it looks like this with 10,000 points. Don't do that. Uh, that will You will regret it, in my opinion. I think uh, two points is plenty for the curve in almost every situation. So get rid of all those other points. So two points should get the job done. Maybe three if you wanted to like, you know, bring the bottom up or something like that. But stick with two, create a simple S curve. And you can take this to your heart's desire. If you want to add more contrast, but you don't like the color that it's adding, you'll hold command, click on that layer mask of the sky. You will bring up a hue saturation and you'll bring down the hue saturation. So now you can see we've just fixed that hue and saturation, but still added that nice contrast in there. Now we're going to go down to our foreground layer here. You can see the uh, layer mask is selecting the foreground and we will do the same thing. We can add a little bit of contrast, but in the foreground, we don't want to add quite as much. I do like what it's doing to the reflection there. I want to make sure you don't make the reflection brighter than the actual sky. That wouldn't make sense, but about right there. Now my, I'm losing the detail in my rocks, so I want to bring the black slider up, but I don't want to like totally give this photo a really matte look. So I may need to actually just bring the whole thing up. And you can play around with this, finding exactly where you want to be. And if I wanted, I would probably use a luminosity mask, if you're familiar with that, to bring up the uh, darkness in this rock here. Um, and that would kind of help to bring it home. So you can see these local adjustments to the contrast made things look a lot better. I didn't smash these blacks quite so much. Kept these background rocks uh, nice and light as well, which is really going to help add some more depth to my image. Now, uh, next thing that we want to talk about here, the last thing, I want to talk about an Orton effect. If you've been a photographer for long, you've certainly heard of the Orton effect. There's many different ways to do it, many different variations. I'm going to show you how I like to do it. I'm going to merge all visible doing command option shift and E that's going to create a new stamped layer on the top, which has everything below. Now you're going to go in and you're going to go to filter. I'm going to go down to blur and you're going to go to Gaussian blur about 50 pixels is usually what I like to do. Now you will change the blend mode to soft light. Now it doesn't look good right now. Go ahead and just turn that layer off, but know that it's still here. 
Now, I usually use a luminosity mask. I have the TK luminosity panel. I would just use a Bright's mask. But if you guys don't have a luminosity mask panel, which, by the way, I'd really recommend downloading this TK one. I think you can get it for free if you give your email. Um, but if you don't want to get a luminosity mask panel, I'll show you how to do it without it. You're going to go to select, and you're going to go to color range. You're going to select the highlights, and then you're going to slide this around. Now, what I am looking for here, uh, I want to increase the fuzziness to 100%. And I'm just looking for a good selection of the brights in my image. Something about right in here looks good. Anything that's white on my selection here is going to be applied to the layer mask or to the layer here as a layer mask, which is then going to add that uh, Gaussian blur, that Orton effect into my image. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to load out as a selection. You'll see all these marching ants. Go ahead and just hit the layer mask button there. Now turn this thing back on and you can see now we're starting to get in business here. It's starting to look pretty good. And double click. Let's call this Orton just for uh, organization's sake. So I'm starting to like the way that's looking, but I want to make a couple more adjustments. I want to grab an exposure adjustment down here. I want to click this down arrow. That's going to make it only apply to this Orton layer. And I just want to brighten this just a little bit. Additionally, I want to do the same thing with a hue saturation, down arrow, drop that saturation. It's just a, that Orton is adding too much saturation. And sometimes I will even go in on this image. It's probably not going to look good, but I'll show you because I do it on a lot of images. I grab a color balance, hit that down arrow, and I will warm it up. I don't really need this one warmed up because it's already plenty warm to begin with. But if you want to make the light a little bit warmer, um, you can do that as well. I'm not going to do it on this photo. Now this is starting to look pretty good. You can see how that just kind of adds a little bit of glow to my image. Um, and so that is basically the Orton effect. You can go through, make adjustments to this as you see fit. But you can see with these local contrast adjustments and the Orton, we went from that to that in probably seven or eight minutes. So those are my four Photoshop effects. Hope that they help you guys out. All right, guys, so you've got the slight warp. You've got the custom vignette. You've got the Orton effect and you have the curves local adjustments. Trust me, don't add contrast any other way other than curves at this point. I think that they're just so fantastic, such a nice way to add contrast. Hopefully you can add these four things to your toolkit, uh, to your workflow. Again, you don't have to use them on every image. Um, I do use most of these on most of my images, not quite all of them, but um, all of my images probably see at least one or two of these effects. So I think they're things that are nice to have in your back pocket to help you improve your images when they are needed. Hope that was helpful for you guys. If it was, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment. It helps me to get this video out to more people so that more people can see it. And of course, subscribe to the channel. I post weekly videos, ultimately trying to help you improve your landscape photography. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. Just appreciate it so, so much. Thank you guys so much. This is Austin James Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.